Hey, what's up everybody? I uh doing a small little video today just tell everybody thanks for the support that I had got on the the 265 engine that had come back from the machine shop. I reached out to Bob and uh he gave me the answer I was expecting. I you know, I asked him None of them, none of them connecting rods are in the right holes. Number one and number two is, but then the rest, there's no real rhyme or reason what cylinders they're in. And he says, uh, "Well, sure, yeah, sure, sure." That's one of his famous words. Sure, sure, sure. He said it won't hurt nothing. Uh, and I said, "Well, did did we balance the engine?" And he said, "No, there was no reason to balance the engine. Uh, everything was within a gram of of each other as far as the connecting rods and the pistons." And he really didn't give me a good uh, reason or answer why he didn't put them in their uh, particular uh, cylinders. Uh, and all I could think of is he's more of a race type of an engine builder. You know what I mean? That's what he did. The majority of his engines was real build-up engines where maybe they're using H-beam rods and things like that where originality don't really matter to him, but... If you guys know anything about me, you already know that engine's coming back apart. He told me it'll, it's fine, it'll run, it'll be happy. I'm not happy. So, I know the engine would be fine and, you know, it's not hurting anything. Some people said, we'll just grind them off. I got a 20-ton 20, a 20 press, I got, you know heat to be able to heat up the wrist pins I'm, I'm just going to take them worst case scenario six of them need switched and i got to pull the the pistons off of the connecting rods and i know you guys are like well that's a rebuilt engine and even me i don't i don't want to dig into it but i'm not going to be happy unless i dig into it so and i'm not i'm not worried about it i don't want to do it i paid good money to have a good engine and I know you guys have all told me that that's a perfectly fine engine, but I do things a certain way when I when I put together a car, when I fix anything, it's just that everybody's like, well, you know, just take a chill pill, a pill, you know. One guy said it's OCD. You guys can call it OCD. You can call it whatever. I just call it right. Just putting it back right, you know, so whatever. Uh I do some videos on that um, engine probably throughout the next week or so while I get the uh, connecting rods out of the motor and the pistons out of it. I'll take them out depending on which rod is where, you know, which cylinder it's in to be able to put four back and four. I'll have to obviously remove number four. So it'll be a slow process because I want to keep the pistons in order of the cylinder that they're in right now. And I know it's a lot of work for nothing, but it's a lot of work for me to sleep at night, basically. So I just wanted to go over that. And I already know I got the, the, the greatest uh, uh, support on YouTube. You know, all, all the comments, all you guys that watch the video, you know, you, you know who you are. You guys rock. So I appreciate that. And uh, that last video, you know, that was... That was just Big Don kind of spiraling down as uh, I embrace, you know, what's next for me. As I, I'm not going to put that engine in like that. I'll fix it and I'll put it in there. It's all new, so what's it matter, you know? Nothing started, nothing has a wear pattern. So anyways, I'll show you guys a couple things and then I'll uh, let you guys get back to your evening. So... I've been working on this and I kind of, it's, it's pretty squared up back onto the frame. So I got to get some uh, braces, but the gaps look good and it shuts good. So I got to get some braces and then I'll start, uh, I'll start messing with the floors on this. I'll probably get the engine tore apart and put back together and painted and all, all sealed up and everything. Just so no debris gets in there, because this time of year you get a lot of pollen and, and stuff like that flying around. So, if you're one of the strange individuals like me that's wanting to put together a uh, 265, 
this right here, here's your part number. This is the intake gasket for a 55 or a 56, 265. And you can see the ports are smaller than a, a, a more normal later production um, 57 and newer 283. This right here fits 1955 and 1956, 265. And then here's the oil pan gasket. This is 1955 only. And it has an extra, I gotta assume, you know, this goes on the passenger side because it doesn't have to kick out this, this gasket right here. But it's got two different ones depending on the style. Or depending on what kind you want to use, I'll, I'll lay them both on there and figure out which one I want. But that's your part number, and this this is for 1955 only. And then these are real similar to the head gaskets that um come out come out of that engine. I don't think this would have been quite as big. Um, I try to go through some of my old videos and see, you know what the gasket looked like but i don't think this would have been quite that big and this is considered like a metal shim head gasket you can see it fits them all and there's a part number 1094 and the reason i wanted to go back with these is because once the quench once they're squeezed once they're compressed it's 16,000, so it'll help out with the uh with keeping the compression as high as I can, probably a nine and a half or a ten to one on that motor, and then there's some valve covers. You can see the difference. I'll 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 be running the holes that are staggered, but all your engines in late '59 went to the straight across. So there's the there's the gaskets for the engine, and there, the lifters are still in there in the box. So. Now I wanted to I wanted to show the uh, little little road draft tube that everybody's talking about, and I cleaned this up. This is the the Z bar linkage and clutch adjustment rod. Just trying to slowly get some things together, and I cleaned that little brass fitting. And there's another one right there. So I can start putting the uh, fuel lines on. I got to order the fuel lines and stuff. This is just this car is just such a big project, and I got them. Them are both bolted down securely again on the new wafer bushings. So this is what the uh, the newer. A lot of people said like sixty three Corvettes and then sixty three Chevys and up would have had this. So, show you the engine real quick. Um, I was able to, I just balled this up just to stick it in there. You know, just try to keep stuff from blowing around. But I pulled the baffle totally out just for now. Just to be able to set the intake on there. And now, see this, this is the plug I was talking about in my last video. And some people do have kind of a good idea where you could drill a hole into that and suck, you know, screw you like a fitting, something like this, but with threads to screw it in there. And then you could run it up to the carburetor and reburn it. But this plug right here is supposed to be in a 265, 55 engine. Look at the difference in the diameter. This, this will go right in a 56 Chevy block. But the 55, the diameter is way bigger. It's just way bigger. So they was all blocked off with that. I forget what size that is. One and three quarters flat disc plug. The only place I was able to find them was, uh, was eBay. So, and here, this is the, uh, road draft tube. And see what I was telling you? It goes right through the block. It goes up and then connects in into there. I call it a straw. 
But see, that's the road draft too. That that right there is on uh, 55 only. So, you know, unless I'm going to block off this up in here, and even you take a chance on something flying up in there if the hole, you know, was not in there. But I'm going to run that. I'm going to run that engine how it was designed to run in 1955. It'll have that straw on it and everything. And some people said that the 55, 56 took a shallow cam plug. You know, it's, it's got, it's got most of the right stuff in it, but I, I am going to probably even pull the camshaft back out of it and probably knock this plug out because I want to see the depth of the rear cam bearing. The 55, 56 had the groove cut in the, uh, they had the groove cut in the camshaft. And if that cam bearing is off by as little as an eighth of an inch, It'll start starving your lifters. So if I'm going to, if I'm going to dig into it and, and kind of just straighten some things out, I want to double check that, that, uh, that rear cam bearing just to see exactly where it is. Because like I said, I mean, this engine's all, it's all new, newly rebuilt. You know, it's, it's a dinosaur really. It's 67 years old. It's, you know, it's had plenty of life, uh, but it's all been it's all been rebuilt. I just gotta iron a couple things out. And then one thing I did do today, which I should have done a long time ago, was I put the original black steering wheel back on this car. I painted it up and cleaned it all up and put it on there. I did have that uh that fifty eight that red fifty eight and palace steering wheel, but that really dressed that up in there. That that's the way it's supposed to look. So there's your update, guys. As much as I, as much as I don't want to, I'm going to, uh, for my own satisfaction and, and for me to know in my mind that the engine is right, I'm going to slowly take that apart and straighten the, the rods back out into the cylinders that they are marked for. And I know you guys are, not all of you, but probably some of you are like, oh man, you're just, you're wasting your time. I'm telling you guys, it will drive me nuts, you know. There was a there was a show years ago. It was called uh, "In Living Color," you know, back when everybody in the world liked each other and we all got along. Probably the late '80s, early '90s. Well, there was this one guy on there, and you know what he always say, "Homie, don't play that." So that's me on that engine. It's got to be right. I, you know, if I don't fix it. I don't have the same desire and the same interest. It's just we're already getting off on the wrong foot. So it'll be a process, and I'll do plenty of videos on it, you know, and uh, show how I get the the uh, pistons, the wrist pins out of the pistons. And it's all new, so it should come apart fairly easily. But I just got to keep the right piston in that cylinder that's there right now uh, and just switch the rods around. But I'll check the cam bearing. I'll do some other things while I'm in there just kind of to see from my my own eyes uh, moving forward. And then another thing I wanted to say was uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out in the world. You know, raising kids ain't easy, especially when they cry or whine or, you know, just being bad in general. So thank you to all the mothers out in the world. Without you, there wouldn't be us. And then one last thing before I let you guys go, one of my buddies is starting to get his YouTube channel taken off and he's got some cool stuff. He's just got to keep pounding out the videos. So if you guys don't mind, his YouTube name is My Man Cave. The guy's name's Mike. He's a friend of mine. Don't live too far away. I've been dealing with him for a while. He's a good guy, but he's got a bunch of tri fives. He's, he's got some nice stuff. So check him out. You guys might like what he has. If you do, give him a give him a sub. Let him know Don's Hot Rod Garage sent him your uh, sent him sent you his way. So that's the update. I'll get on the engine. I'll make it the way I want to, and uh, probably even before I start doing the floors, we'll start that bad boy up just so we can check that. That big check mark, we can check that off the list that the engine is good. We'll fire that bad boy up. So, anyways, 
Thanks for stopping by Don's Hot Rod Garage. You guys are rocking and rolling. You guys really was rocking on that last video. I think a lot of you guys was thinking that I was, I was ready to take off out of town, but that's just me spiraling down before I spiral back up. It ain't the first time. It won't be the last time. I'll catch you guys on the next video.